We're only down to what three teams, so uh, that means 27 other teams should be thinking about the offseason. You feel me? Um, and Zach Buckley over at BR put together an article, one tr one new trade idea for every team. Yeah, I know I'm the king of player movement over here on YouTube, so I want to react to it. Super excited for this offseason, though, because we have like Jimmy Butler rumors, Donovan Mitchell rumors, or I guess Garland slash Jared Allen rumors, whoever, just the Cavs rumors in general. Um, what are the Bulls going to do is always a huge question. The 76ers got all of this money. The Orlando Magic have all this money. There, are, there could potentially be some big things happening. So, um, though most of these trades are probably going to be unrealistic, I'm, I still just love thinking about the thought process. Thinking about the thought process. Meta, metacognition. Uh, first, we start off with the Atlanta Hawks, and it's Trey Young for Brandon Ingram straight up. Nothing else. This one is an interesting one, one that I've seen a few different times, so I don't know if I would classify it as a new trade. I think Trey Young might be a little bit more valuable than Brandon Ingram on the last year of his deal. Maybe I'm in the minority. Minority. I did see another report that said a lot of teams would rather have DeJounte Murray than Trey Young. So a one-for-one -one swap if I'm at land, I feel kind of icky about it because um, Trey Young is that good. Uh, and it's just so happened that, I don't know, his teams haven't been really successful since that one run. Next one we have is the Boston Celtics trading for who? Uh, Jaden Springer, the, the 30th overall pick in this year's draft for Tory Craig. Sign me up, Tory. Love you. But you can go to Boston and go compete. We'll take Jaden Springer, I, I guess, mostly for that draft pick. The last time the Bulls had the 30th overall pick, we drafted Jimmy Butler. I don't know if there's a Jimmy Butler in this draft class. <laughs> but if you telling me that the Bulls are tearing it down and getting young players back, I'm 100% in. Next Brooklyn Nets trade is Mikael Bridges. Dennis Schroeder for Darius Garland. Interesting. So what? So that leaves Darius Garland in Brooklyn with who? Dorn Finney-Smith, Cam Thomas, Cam Johnson, Nicholas Claxton maybe because he's a free agent. So maybe him, maybe not. It would be a weird lateral-ish trade if you're the Brooklyn Nets. I, the idea behind it, if you were the Cavaliers, is kind of interesting though. Because Mikel Bridges is the type of player that I think would, would fit very well. With a guy like Donovan Mitchell, again, this is assuming that Donovan Mitchell is signing his extension. I don't hate it if I am if I am the Cleveland Cavaliers because that puts Mikael Bridges back to like a secondary option slash a third option potentially, depending on what Evan Mobley ends up doing, which is probably better for his career, better for his production. But if I am the Brooklyn Nets, I don't know if this does anything for me other than getting a young, fun player to have. But you still are in a very similar spot. You know what I'm saying? If I'm trading Mikhail, I want like some draft capital in a lot of cases. But Josiah said they're in the crossroads with their organization. So who knows what they're going to end up doing. Charlotte Hornets trade is Seth Curry in, in two seconds for Jalen Hushafino. Okay, next. Do I need to have an opinion about a Seth Curry in two second round of trade? No, I'm not. I don't have an opinion. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Vooch and Caruso for Wiggs. Number 50, 52. Almost the last pick in this year's draft. And a 2026 first top four protected. I mean, I don't know what this does for the Bulls other than say like, hey, we got a first round pick for this guy. But I think that the, the front office is going to be, it's going to be hard for them to swallow their pride and do a trade like this because they gave up so much for Vucevic. And honestly, I believe Alex Caruso by himself is worth the first. So you're basically saying, hey, here's Vucevic. I'm okay with throwing Alex Caruso for a top four protected first from the Golden State Warriors. And we get back Wiggs, and maybe he can rejuvenate his career here in Chicago. But if I'm not mistaken, he's got three years left, and it's like, what, $90 million left? It's a lot of money, man. It's a lot of money. And then we don't know what, what that means for DeMar DeRozan. I'm assuming this is a break it down trade. So DeMar DeRozan is not here. Maybe it's a sign to trade with DeMar DeRozan. It's just there's so many different variables. If this is the trade that says like, hey, the Bulls are going to tear it down, then I'm, I'm here for it. But if they do this trade, but also think they bring it back DeMar DeRozan, then I hate it. Also, I don't ever want to trade Alex Caruso. I know it feels inevitable, but I don't want to trade that man. He, he feels very Chicago. Next, Cleveland Cavaliers. It is Jared Allen. For Dyson Daniels, Larry Nance, and 21. This is a trade that, like, if you're doing this trade for the Cleveland Cavaliers' perspective, you have to really, really believe that Dyson Daniels is ready to, to compete, I guess, um, as a, like a lead guard or starting guard. Because if you're trading Jared Allen, again, I, I'm doing all this with the assumption that your goal is to bring back Donovan Mitchell. So you still have Darius Garland, you have Dyson Daniels, who's running like a hybrid three. I don't, oh, I don't like this trade at all. I love, I love it if I'm the Pelicans because Jared Allen's the type of center I want with New Orleans. But Dyson Daniels, who's one of my favorite defenders in basketball, that's just, that's just not enough. Offensively, he's just not ready yet, and I'm not trading an all-star caliber 
center, all-star caliber center in Jared Allen for, for that unless I'm tearing everything down, and that's not their goal. Next trade we have is Josh Green to bring back Doe. I, I, sure, I guess. I, I mean, Dorian Finney-Smith is about 31, 32 years old. I'm always hesitant trading a younger player, and it's not like Josh Green is 22 anymore, but trading a younger player for an older player. But I know the timeline for the Mavericks is now. I mean, they're one game away from the finals as we speak, but... I don't know. I don't like it. Denver. No oh, man. Oh, man. MPJ to the Toronto Raptors for Bruce Brown, Kelly Olenek, number 31, and a 2026 first rounder from Indy. So one of the picks you get back from Pascal, you send off. And the way Indiana is probably going to look over the next couple years, that pick is probably not going to be a lot in the lottery. Who knows? I mean, we're talking two years down the line. Anything can really happen. But this would, this would, again, be another general manager have to swallow his pride because they said in Denver, Calvin Booth said that once Bruce Brown ended up in Indiana, all these teams want Bruce Brown. Little do they know we got Peyton Watson, who's bigger, who's faster, who's better defensively. He's a better playmaker. So he would have to be like, you know what, Bruce, my fault. I ain't mean to throw that dirt on your name and come back to the team. But I also think that if you are making a trade for the Denver Nuggets, this as a depth piece, because this is where the idea comes from, right? The the Denver Nuggets didn't have any bench production throughout their run. Bruce Brown and Kelly Olynyk could potentially be that. Kelly Olynyk would be the best center in the Jokic era, like the real Jokic era that you can actually trust. But, I mean, it gives them another, another opportunity to draft. But Mike Malone has been very adamant about not really liking younger players and how they're not ready. And that's why we see Julian Strother, Pickett, even Zeke Naji. I mean, the list. Uh, Christian Brown is the only young player on the roster that they really, really like trust. So you're telling him that he's going to have a 31st overall pick, another dude they might have to try to incorporate. I don't love this at all. Also, if you're if you're in Toronto, like if it's just these pieces, you're like, yeah, Michael Porter Jr. But now you're saying we got to give up a first round pick from two years from now, even though it's not our first round pick, it's one of our prized possessions from the Pascal trade. I'm not a big fan of this one on both sides, honestly. But it did get the wheels spinning. And when I'm doing these videos and reacting to these articles, I really just want the wheels to be spinning and try to think about the perspective of everything. And it did that for me. So thank you. Detroit basketball. Okay. So Isaiah Stewart, Q Grimes, fifth pick for Kuzma. So this is really saying we won 14. How many games did they win this season? 14 games for Kyle Kuzma. Because that's basically what this is. Quentin Grimes, he needs to rejuvenate his career. He was bad in New York that he was worse with the Pistons in his little bit of time. Isaiah Stewart is just like, I mean, he's part of the future, but nobody in Detroit is like, oh, he's untouchable. So I honestly feel like given this draft and me not being a big draft guy, I guess I'm just going on other people's opinions. The fifth overall pick is not as valuable this year as it would have been last year, the year before that, the year before that. So this might be pretty solid value for uh, vol value for Kyle Kuzma, but it would be hard to convince your fan base to do this trade. You know what I mean? Even though, again, I think this might be good value for Kyle Kuzma. It's just, optically, it would look bad to trade the fifth overall pick after losing or winning 14 games for Kyle Kuzma. It would bring him back to Detroit. I'm sorry, into Michigan. So that's kind of cool, cool story. But that just doesn't do enough for you, I don't think. And Kuzma, because he decided he didn't want to go to the Boston or the the Dallas Mavericks a few months ago, and he wants to go uh, wait to to get traded to a team that's going to compete. He might take the first flight out of Detroit the moment his contract is up. And the way the Wizards are running things, they actually ask Kyle Kuzma, would you like to get traded here? He'll mess around and say, no, don't send me to Detroit. And then his trade dies down immediately. The Golden State Warriors see Wiggins can trade for Kelly Olenek and Jalen McDaniels. This would just <laughs> this would just be Toronto getting the whole Team Canada together. There's just the whole Team Canada together, um, which is, would be funny. But I don't think it answers the questions. Oh, wait. You be trading away Kelly Olenek, though. A hell of a trade. Houston. Oh. Oh. Uh, Dylan Brooks. Tari Eason. Number three for Jeremy in 14. If I am the Portland Trailblazers, I am very intrigued by this trade. Because Tari Eason was injured this season, so I, maybe the stock is down on Tari. Tari can hoop. He can flat out hoop. He's an offensive rebounding machine. We saw him put the ball on the floor more and more, even again, small sample size because he was injured this season. So you're telling me Jeremy Grant, who, let's be real, we like Jeremy Grant here in Portland, but he's not a part of the long-term future. We could turn that into Tari Eason and a number three overall pick, and we also have our own for, uh, first round pick too. I love this trade if I am Portland. 
If I am Houston, this is the type of trade I think Houston is going to be interested in doing. Again, they're trying to ramp up their timeline. And with all of the forwards over there, maybe they believe Tari Eason is the odd man out. Again, I wouldn't do that if I'm Houston. Um, and Dylan Brooks kind of rejuvenated his career. And, and not that he had a bad... Like, let's be real. The whole him going to China thing that happened after the playoffs was just, just Twitter memes and stuff. It wasn't, like, based on anything. Um, but he had a really good season. He helped change the identity over there. So it would be kind of weird to convince your fans you're trading three and a young Tari Eason and a guy who we f uh, found out that we love on the team for Jeremy Grant, who's really good. Don't get me wrong, but he's not changing this organization. I mean, he might help us have a playoff push, but he's not changing this organization. And he's guaranteed a lot of money over the next couple years. Indiana Pacers, Jairus Walker, Ijax for Alex Caruso. If I'm being honest with you, if this trade happened in real life, I would, I would be sad about it. But I, I would... I would welcome Jairus Walker with open, open arms. He was one of my favorite prospects in this draft class. Again, I don't watch much college basketball. So me saying he was one of my favorites was based on the interview I did with him. So <laughs> and that don't really mean anything. Uh, and Ijax would just be a different monster compared to Vooch, a different type of guy, a lob threat, a better defensive player. I would be very interested in this trade. Um... Because it, it does make sense. If you're going to bring back Obi Toppin, and you're going to bring back Pascal Siakam, when will you ever have room for Jairus Walker to blossom? Maybe you're saying that that's why we're not bringing back Obi or whatever. But since Jairus to Chicago, we'll probably stunt his growth. Let's be real. Next trade. The Clippers are trading Bones Highland for Seth Curry. Okay. What? There's no comments to be had on the Seth Curry trade. No disrespect to Seth Curry. You know what I'm saying? I got a signed hat of yours in the basement right now. But I, I just don't have an opinion about... Um, Bottom, bottom of the rotation role players switching teams is not really my forte. Okay, all right. Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, Jer Vanderbilt, Jalen Hushafino, two first round picks for Jimmy Butler and Thomas Bryant. <laughs> Jimmy Butler, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis together. Um, the top end talent would be so very phenomenal. But what does that do with the rest of the team? D'Angelo Russell's not in the trades. Okay, D'Angelo Russell's on the team. Uh, Max Christie, you're starting at the two, I guess. And then the rest of the guys are there. This is this is, this bothers me, okay? And and maybe there's a world where these type of trades, the Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, Jaren Vanderbilt, Jalen Hushafino trade package is enough for a general manager to trade them a star player. Now, again, Jimmy Butler's value might not be as high as we normally would think because whoever trades for him has to pay him 50 plus million dollars for like three years in a row. Like he's going to want an extension. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a big extension because he was an all-NBA player not too long ago. But you cannot tell me that LeBron and Anthony Davis were all-NBA, which they deserve to be. They were on my own ballot. Right, so they had two All NBA players, right? And you're trying to tell me that their role players are good enough to get me Jimmy Butler, but the role players weren't good enough to get me out of the first round? Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't do this one. Um, but that would be kind of interesting to see them play together. The space it would just be god ass awful. But the talent is the talent. I I'm, I do worry about Jimmy Butler's health now that he's hitting his mid 30s because the last year scared me a little bit. Um, but the Jimmy Butler trade, I'm assuming that this is not going to be the only Jimmy Butler trade we see in the rest of this article. Memphis Grizzlies trade, Brandon Clark, John Conchar, Zaire Williams at 39 for John Collins. Has John Collins rejuvenated his value? Because uh, when he was traded from Atlanta, it was for a bucket of balls. It was like, here's Rudy Gay. That was it. And now you're telling me we can get Zaire <laughs> It's not like act, act like Zaire Williams is his stud. But uh, maybe, maybe a change of scenery can help him. Give us this for, for Vucevic, please. We'll take it in a heartbeat. Bring John Contra, our Illinois' very own. Bring him back. I mean, I guess this trade makes sense for the Jazz. If I'm trading these contracts away, I want somebody maybe a little bit better than John Collins. But the lobs between him and John Morant could be kind of fun. It will be a fun team to watch, I guess. Um, the Miami Heat. See, Duncan Robinson at 15 for Keldon Johnson. So Keldon does feel like the odd man out of that team. So you're telling me we can get a 15th overall pick in this year's draft? We already got four. I think we got eight as well. Now we got 15, so we incorporate three different rookies here. I mean, maybe Duncan Robinson as a shooter with Wimby will be kind of cool. This is one of those trades where if I am if I am the Miami Heat, I'm probably a little bit interested. But Duncan just rejuvenized his career where he went from, what, an a eight-point-per-game player to, like, 14 or something. And he's back to being in a rotation because I remember at one point he was out completely. 
Keldon is just a, uh, he's one of those players that I don't have a personal opinion about just yet because I feel like there's times where I'm really excited to watch him play and he looks good and there's other times I forget he's on the court um, and then last year he didn't shoot the ball well like he did the year before that so it's kind of one of them trades I'm like I can see both teams saying sure and I could also see both teams saying no way in hell the Bucks, Bobby Portis uh, Ajax and for, for Gary Payton a second Moses Moody 52 and another second I don't think this trade does anybody for anything for either of these two teams, if I'm being honest with you. That's a hard pass on both sides. I don't even know what the rationalization will be. Yeah, no thanks. Whoa, a Nas Reed trade. Hold on. I was, I was legitimately expecting the Carthony Towns trade. I won't lie to you. Nas Reed to the Pelicans for Dyson Danes and Jordan Hawkins? What? Um. So I understand the Minnesota trades will probably be with the idea that we're a very expensive team. So we're trading one of our top dudes for some dudes that's making way less money so we can balance out our salary cap book. But Dice a day is a Jordan Hawkins for the sixth man of the year. Again, I, Jordan Hawkins is one of my guys. Another one of my favorites from this draft class. He's a born shooter that could be useful in Minnesota. But this is just... You cannot... After a thousand people got Nas Reed tattoos, you cannot convince your fan base you're trading him away for that. And honestly, I know I say stuff like that a lot, but that that's a real thing in front offices. Not it's not just about did we win the trade. It's like the perspective of the trade immediately matters. Some teams are okay with knowing that people are not gonna like their trade. The Minnesota Timbers are one of those teams. So maybe they would do something like this because they had to know that the Rudy Gobert trade was not going to be looked at positively, but they thought it was the right deal. A lot of these teams are afraid to pull the trigger. You know how many times I, I you hear about a rumor of a trade being at the finish line, but the other team chickened out because of something like this? It happens all the time. So I don't know if you can convince your fans on certain stuff. So the Brandon Ingram trade for Miles Turner, TJ McConnell in 36. Um, this is very interesting. I just did a, <laughs> a 2K video where Brandon Ingram did end up on my team um, when I was the Indiana Pacers, but that not nothing real. I mean, the Miles Turner slash uh, uh, Zaire, Zaire Williamson front court is like a match made in heaven, but what does that mean for the Pacers front court? Are we saying Isaiah Jackson is our starting center now? Now, that changed our whole offense because he's not the shooter that Miles Turner is, but Brandon Ingram comes in and he's immediately... Like, you form a pseudo big three. I mean, it's not like... Like, when I think about big threes, I'm thinking Braun. <laughs> I'm thinking Braun, Bosh, and Wade, who are all... Well, at least Braun and Bo, or Braun and Wade were top 15 in the league at the time. I'm not, Whatever. Um, a, a Halliburton, Siaka, and Brandon Ingram big three is just on a different tier. It's three all-star caliber players for sure, but it changes things. Does that mean you want to move Pascal over to the five? He played a little bit of five in Toronto. I don't love it from that... I understand increasing the talent level. Uh, you have to re-sign Brandon Ingram too. That's another one of those things. But Miles being the longest tenure pacer, trading him away after a conference finals run where he was phenomenal. I know he didn't play well in that last game or two, but he was phenomenal the whole playoff run. And say, all right, Miles, take you and all your Legos to New Orleans now. Just be weird. Not a shot at Lego, by the way. I think like building Lego is really cool. Um, Mitchell Robinson to the Warriors for Gary Payne, Moses Moody in the 2026 first rounder uh, with the idea that Isaiah Hardenstein is the guy and Mitchell Robinson has not been able to stay healthy his entire career. So we bring in some more role players like Gary Payton is a guy that's going to Knicks fans would love because he's an all hustle, all heart type of dude. Moses Moody in the first. Uh, we already if we're New York, we already have so many playable players. Like, they legitimately, when healthy, <laughs> got to say when healthy, legitimately can run a real 10-man rotation. So you're telling me we're getting rid of one of our centers and bringing back two other dudes and we have to find minutes for those dudes with Tom Thibodeau? Don't love it. Don't love it. Um, I, I do kind of like it if I am the the Warriors. But it was really like, do we trust Trace uh, we, do we trust Trace Jackson Davis to be a full-time starting center? This trade will make me think that they think otherwise. Uh, okay, C, Josh Giddy. And pick 12 for Anthony Simons. So I think Josh Giddy's 21. Anthony Simons is 24-ish. So around similar in age. I do believe that Josh Giddy might be the, not might be, he is the odd man out. I don't know if that's this offseason or during the regular season of the next year. But he is undoubtedly the odd man out. You saw it in the playoffs. He couldn't play. He wasn't a threat shoot uh, as a shooter. 
Anthony Simons in that lineup changes the dynamic of that defense quite a bit. Anthony Simons is ranked towards the bottom 5% defensively for like the entirety of his career. Maybe with a team like OKC when he got peace around him like Lou Dord and J-Dub and Chad Holmgren, that defense intens defensive intensity is going to increase a little bit. But it does change them a little bit defensively. It does add another like bucket getter. Like he's legitimately a bucket getter. And I think in that OKC series... Um, they could have used a guy like Anthony Simons, but is it enough to trade 12 and Giddy for? Maybe. Maybe. If you're the Blazers, though, you're probably not very interested in this because Josh Giddy has showed that he probably needs the ball in his hands to be the most impactful version of himself. And we got School Henderson, who we're trying to turn into the next point guard of the future. So we're going to take the ball out of school hands for Josh Giddy? No. Then Josh Giddy's just not playing his best basketball because he ain't got the ball. So, yeah, it's one of those weird ones. So if you think that there's no real, like, really good place for Josh Giddy because how many teams are going to be able to say, hey, Josh Giddy, here's the, here's the ball. Orlando Magic gets, who? Oh, Michael Porter Jr. for Cole Anthony, Mo Wagner, Joe Ingles in, in 18. So you telling me we're going to have MPJ, Paolo Bencaro, and Fra Franz Wagner on the court together? Like, ah, uh, you know what I'm saying? So pass, hard pass on that one. 76ers just trade 16 for Moses Moody. I feel like we could have had something cooler here, but the problem is right now going into the offseason, the, the Philadelphia 76 have, what, three players in the contract? <laughs> so it's hard to build a trade for them unless it is like a good old-fashioned signing trade of, of you sign somebody else signing their player to trade into your cap space, and then you get back this draft capital. This is such a nothing trade, though. Next one, Phoenix Suns. Probably going to be a nothing trade, and it is. Yes, it is. Damian Lee in 22 for... For Marcus Sasser. <laughs> yeah. Not to trade. Because it's a team that doesn't have a lot to trade. They're telling you that they're bringing back their starting five. I'm surprised this trade doesn't have a Nas Little trade. I think he's the guy that's most, li most likely to get traded. Because he's making like $6 million a year. So I was expecting to see something a little bit different here. As far as the trade goes. But it's another one of those. Back to back nothing trades. I hate that. Let's get back on track. Malcolm Brogdon to the Orlando Magic for Jet Howard. Joe Ingles in 18. This will be them kind of conceding. Uh, and saying like, yeah, the Jet Howard trade of the Jet Howard pick wasn't the greatest of the time, but maybe we can risk uh, get some value in having a real point guard. And Malcolm Brogdon, when he's healthy, could be a six man of the year guy. And we saw him be a starter, and he was pretty good in that role as well. So this is a low cost, depending on what your evaluation of Jet Howard is. This was a low cost type trade for the Orlando Magic. Next, Sacramento Kings, Jimmy Butler, Sacramento Kings trade, HB. Kevin Herter, Davion Mitchell, 13, a 2018 or 2028 first round and a 2030 first rounder for Jimmy Butler. Go all in, why don't you, uh, Sacramento? Uh, you would want like at least one real player, I think, in a um, Jimmy Butler trade. HB, Kevin Herter, Davion Mitchell, none of those guys are that. Like they're when I say real player, I mean like a guy you can convince your fans that this is one of the dudes we're building around, right? Um, so. So that's for that reason, I'm gonna say no to this one. But it does give you some good future value. You don't know what Sacramento's gonna look like in in six years from now. So you're like, yeah, this is unprotected. I'm kind of interested. Jimmy Butler is 34 years old. So what? Four years from now? I'm sorry, six years from now, he's gonna be 40. So that pick might be really valuable to some organizations. But the players involved, I'm not really interested in. Unless I'm doing a hard reset. And I don't see them trade a bam out of bio. So, no thank you. Spurs, Keldon Johnson, Malachi Brand. Oh, my God. Keldon Johnson, Malachi Branham, Zach Collins, Blake Wesley, the fourth overall pick, the eighth overall pick, a 2025 first, a 2027 first for Devin Booker. Whoa. Um, so, this will be like, yeah, a hard reset. Or do you say that we're doing all of this and keeping Kevin Durant around? Because I don't think Kevin is going to be happy about this. If you're thinking, okay, this is just under the hypothetical that the Suns say, you know what, this is a bad idea. We want to recoup some of our assets. It's not a terrible trade package. But if you're saying we're going to do this and keep Kevin around on the table, what the hell are we doing? We might as well just keep Devin Booker around. Fourth overall pick in this draft class could be a, it could be somebody that's great eventually. But not projected, so. You know what I'm saying? Um... And because of that, that's why I kind of like it from the Spurs pr perspective. Like, yeah, we were just in the lottery for three straight seasons. We got Wimby. We we got Jeremy. You know, we, we got Devin Vassell, who I don't think he was a lottery pick, but he was on the cusp at least. And now we bring in Book. That that line will be kind of cool. Um, yeah, I, I would like this from the Spurs. It's a lot to give up for sure. But we have Victor Wimanyama. And these aren't even our own first round picks. Oh, my God. Don't give it away. Give it away. Heartbeat, heartbeat, because we still have our own first. These are Atlanta's picks. We don't really give a damn. These are Atlanta's picks. 
Can sign me up from the spur. I might do that in 2K later. I can't lie. That's a trade that I'm into. I might do that in 2K right now. The hell? Uh, <laughs> let's do it. The Toronto Raptors. Bruce Brown for wigs. Just, again, another trade where you get another Canadian to come to Canada. I don't hate it, I guess. Wiggins' contract is going to turn off a lot of people, and I understand that. But once you start playing at home, you just play differently, or you play worse. It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Another John Collins trade. It's John Collins 29 and 32 for Duncan and Caleb Martin. Hmm. I just don't have an opinion about John Collins anymore. I didn't watch as much Utah Jazz as I probably should have. So I don't know how good he is anymore. At one point, he's a 20-point-per-game score, you know? But nowadays, I might be okay with Caleb Martin and Duncan Robinson. No joke. I mean, you get these two first-round picks or this one first-round pick in a in a second. But, like, you know, eh. And the last one, Kuzma in 26 for Jared Allen. Interesting. So that's that's moving Moe completely over to the five full time. Um, you also have to figure out the Darius Garland trade. But let's say, let's say, um, ooh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's have some fun here. So Kuzma's a part of the team. And then we go all the way up to do, not this trade, but what was the other trade? It was with the Brooklyn Nets. Let's go look at the Nets trade one more time. All right, so it's like your new lineup. Let's say you do both of these deals. Your star lineup is Schroeder, Donovan Mitchell, Mikael Bridges, Cal Kuzma, Evan Mobley. Is that good value for those two all, a few former All-Stars? I don't know, man. Anyway, I love doing these, these articles and reacting to other people's trades. I always feel like it takes a lot of courage to put out a fake trade because nobody's ever going to be really happy with the fake trade. So shout out to BR slash Buckley for always being willing to be talked about at, on, this, on this platform. And also, I know Twitter be taking these screenshots to go wild with them.